Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve maximum subarray, lead code number 53. So we're given an integer array nums, and we need to find the subarray, whereas subarray is a contiguous, non-empty sequence of elements. So the subarray with the largest sum, and you just need to return its sum. So you don't need to return the actual subarray. So if we're given this array here, you can actually pick out this piece right here. So you'll have a four, negative one is three, plus two is five, plus one is six. That turns out to be the maximum subarray, and you just return that sum. And I don't know why they give these really silly examples. Of course, if it's just one, the sum is going to be one. Okay, let's say we are given this array of numbers right here, and you wanted the sum of the maximum subarray. So that is actually going to be these set of numbers right here is going to be 7 minus 3 is 4 plus 4 is a total of 8. Now we'll technically describe what is a bottom-up dynamic programming approach and it's going to be constant space but it's not really going to feel like dynamic programming at all so it actually kind of has more of a greedy feel to be honest but you can really call it either one you want. Now the idea here is that we keep two variables. We have the current sum, which starts at zero. Of course, we have no sum so far. And you'd of course also want to know the max sum overall. So the best sum that we find, eventually we want that to be eight. Now your max sum, you would want to set that so far to be negative infinity because you might actually get negative values. In fact, we would right at the beginning. So if you look at the first value here, well, our current sum would go to negative two. Now negative two actually is better than negative infinity. So you'd set your max sum to be a little bit better, which is negative two. So, so far our best is minus two. And when we go to the next value, before we do that, hey, our current sum is negative. So this is actually less than zero, meaning that if you were to keep it in your window or your subarray here, well, that's not useful because you would rather just have seven on its own, which has a value of seven, than minus two plus seven together, which would be five. So these negative cur sums, those are never ever going to be helpful. When you see those, you would set your cursum back to be zero, basically saying, hey, we're going to start our window fresh here and kind of forget that we've seen this stuff. Now, we still have marked down that the maximum sum so far was negative two, so you don't entirely forget it, but moving forward, we're not going to use it. Okay, so we look at the next value, which is seven. Okay, seven plus our current sum of zero is going to be seven, and seven is definitely better than minus two. That is bigger, so the max that we saw so far is seven. Now, you would want to keep this seven because our current sum is positive. And so you'd actually kind of want to stretch this along like this. And so now our current sum is going to be seven minus three, which is four. However, just because we saw a negative value, that doesn't mean we want to actually discard it. We actually need to keep it because there's other stuff in the positives to the left of it actually making the overall sum still positive. So this four, that is contributing. If you were to get more stuff over here, you add another four. Well, now we have four plus four four, which is equal to eight. And as we see here, the max sum that we see at the end would be eight. So that's really all there is to it. You actually just can loop through the array. And if you ever get a current sum that is less than zero, so if you get a negative cur sum, you actually just set it to be zero to basically exclude that stuff that's not helping. And if you have a positive cur sum like two or three, well, you'd wanna keep that because that's gonna contribute. Okay, the code for this is really easy. It's exactly what we said in the visualization. The max sum is equal to the float of negative infinity so far. And you'd set our current sum that we have so far equal Equal to zero. Then we'll loop through the numbers. So for i in the range of the length of the numbers, what we do is say cur sum is going to go up by the value that we're currently looking at. Even if that is negative, remember if your total array is something like just, you know, the array of negative two, you actually want this to work. Max sum is equal to the max of max sum and the current sum. So if your current sum was minus two here, you would actually immediately want to set your max sum to be minus two. Now, importantly, after you specify your max sum here, if that current sum is less than zero, if that current sum is not helping you, you wouldn't want to keep it moving forward. So we simply just set it back to the default of current sum is equal to zero. That's amazingly, that's all the code. It's a really easy problem if you explain it and learn it the right way. You just return your max sum that we saw. That is going to run in big O of n time, and that's actually going to have constant space as well. Okay, drop a like if this was helpful, guys. I hope it was, and have a great day. Bye-bye.